There were three other programs that are important to know from the first few years of the New Deal. One is the Agricultural Adjustment Act, or the AAA. The AAA was aimed at dealing with farmers' problems with overproduction. Remember, they were producing too much, so farm prices were really low. Also, dealing with the problem of uh, overusing the land. They overused the land in a lot of places, especially the Midwest, which is why it turned into a big desert and led to the Dust Bowl. The AAA paid farmers to not use land, and it is much more complicated than this. But basically the federal government would pay farmers, for example, who had 100 acres, to only use, or to not use 25 of those acres. And so just by not using some of the land, the federal government is going to give them money for that 25 acres to not use it and not produce as much. And it's much more complicated, but in a nutshell, that's what it entailed. Uh, and the money to pay the farmers came from a new tax that was placed on the processors of farm products or the manufacturers of farm products. So, for example, textile mills, the places where they turn cotton into shirts or clothes, that is a processor or a manufacturer. So there was a special tax placed on the manufacturers of farm products, and that tax paid the farmers to not use their land. Now, if this sounds like a bad idea, I promise you it was the best of all the bad ideas. There were a lot of other bad ideas and none of them would work because there were tons of them. This is the best of all bad ideas. And it was a bad idea in one sense because it was really bad for the general population. This is a time where people couldn't afford food. The AAA increased the price of food for the rest of the population. So for the rest of Americans, it is going to increase how much they have to pay for food because one, it's dealing with overproduction. So the price of food is going to go up. Also, the processors that were taxed, when they were taxed, they then just raise their prices more to pay for that tax. So this is raising the price of, making the rest of the population pay more to help farmers. And this did not bring prosperity to the farmers. This did not make any farmer rich by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but it allowed them to survive. And that is not a little thing. Farmers have been doing terrible since the 1870s. Since we had become an advanced uh, manufacturing economy, farmers have been doing continuously worse and worse and worse, except World War I. But they have been doing worse and worse and worse. All this did was allowed farmers to survive. So it is an example of what I mentioned before of collectivism. Why should the rest of America help or pay more to help farmers? It's because you need farmers. The United States does not want to be in a position of importing all of its goods. So this helped the farmers to the detriment of the rest of the population, but it allowed farmers to survive. And from 1933 on, agriculture in the United States, farming in the United States, has been a per permanently subsidized part of the federal government, meaning the federal government has, uh, the, well, the entire farm sector has been so su subsidized. It's the only reason that farmers are able to make a living, uh, and that has been continuous since 1933. But obviously, we need farmers in this country. So AAA was the first act for the federal government to provide, provide direct relief to farmers, and it stabilized agriculture. Another program was to try to deal with business. 
This is one of the unmitigated failures of the New Deal. It was called the National Industri Industrial Recovery Act, or the NRA, not like the gun club. Uh, NRA was to help businesses by reducing competition. So it is very complicated, but essentially it would take, get, it would organize industry. So everyone, all the companies from the steel industry would get together with both a uh, representative of labor unions and also a representative of the government. And then together, those three, business, labor, and the government would work out codes for each industry that would say how much they were able to produce, how much they were able to uh, charge, and how much they would pay workers and work worker hours. So if this sounds familiar, it is almost exactly like what Herbert Hoover had called for with his trade associations, except this time government, or th this time labor unions are also represented. So this idea is taken pretty directly from Herbert Hoover's belief in, uh, it's called associ associationalism and volunteerism. It's not forcing anyone. It is getting them to get together voluntarily to reduce competition because competition can lead to waste. How is this enforced? There is no enforcement. The federal government can't like punish a company or charge them more. It's forced by popular peer pressure. If you were a member of the NRA, then you got to get one of these placards with this blue uh, eagle, and then you'd put it in your storefront. And the idea is individuals were supposed to only buy from companies that had that blue eagle. So it is the only enforcement on this is that kind of popular pressure and popular support. This did not last very long. Well, it will last till 1935, and then the Supreme Court will rule it unconstitutional. But by then, most people agreed it was an unmitigated failure because it's, it's just a terrible, terrible idea. And the reason it's a terrible idea is because it goes against the very nature of capitalism. Um, having all companies organize and work together there were so many violations of this. You know, people would join and then companies would be like, you know what, I'm gonna charge a little less for my goods. I'm gonna pay my workers a little bit less. I'm gonna make them work a few more hours. And then there'd be compliance and there was, it was just such a mess. But again, it goes against capitalism, which the, one of the really important features of capitalism is competition. And it is trying to eliminate competition. So, it was a bad idea from the start, and when it was ruled unconstitutional by 1935, no one, no one was sad to see it go. It was an absolute failure. One of the really important things, measures of the New Deal, was called the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA. This is an example of what's called regional planning. So this area of the Tennessee Valley was one of the most impoverished and underdeveloped areas in the entire country. Going to this area was like going to a third world country. It was, uh, it was in such awful shape that there were a lot of towns that uh, there, there would be one pub that the entire town would share. Uh, less than 2% of the entire population in that in, whole area had electricity. What the TVA did is the federal government developed this area by building dams. All those little black lines, those are dams that were created throughout the TVA area. And this is supposed to help for several reasons. Uh, one, one of the most important things dams, dams do, and Again, this is why 1930s are like a defining point in Texas, and Texas did not have dams before this, is provide fresh water. It controls water, so uh, when you don't have dams and there's a large rain, the 
rivers flood over and they destroy everything in their path. So that was a regular occurrence before dams were brought in. So it controls water, it provides fresh water, and it provides electricity, of course. And it provided a ton of jobs. So all those people that are in absolute poverty, they got to get jobs working on these things because these are massive, massive construction projects. So these are dams owned, ran, and controlled by the federal government. And here is the really important thing to know about the TVA. The dams are still around to this day. And they're massive. The federal government then sold the electricity to the people in the area. The TVA is the single most radical thing the New Deal will do. And it's the most radical because this is the federal government selling electricity to private individuals in direct competition with private electric companies. So private electric companies are now competing against the federal government. And obviously, federal government in this case was not looking to make huge profits. Uh, they're looking to provide electricity. So what it does is force the private companies to have to lower their prices. This is the single most radical thing the federal government done during the New Deal because the TVA is putting the federal government in economic competition with private companies. Um, that may not seem like a huge deal, but imagine the federal government started making electric vehicles and what that would do to Tesla. Uh, it, private companies cannot compete economically with the federal government if the federal government's objective is to provide services inexpensively. So the TVA, it was wildly successful. It brought electricity to uh, the majority of the people. It made this area that was totally impoverished into a area that was livable and more advanced. To this day, uh, that everything you see in that area, the reason it was developed is because of the New Deal. So it was incredibly effective in making individuals' lives better, stopping flooding, providing fresh water, providing electricity, but it was so controversial that it was not tried again anywhere else to this degree. The DBA was so controversial that, and there was so much pushback from private companies and people that, uh, the congressmen that supported those industries, that this kind of regional planning was not tried again. So it's not socialism in that the federal government didn't take over private electric companies, but again, it's, it is the most radical part of the New Deal. Now, everything I have just mentioned, everything I've mentioned up to this point, everything that was passed between 1933 and 19, 1934, up to 19, uh, getting to 1935, it is called the first New Deal. And again, there were so many programs, we barely scratched the surface. And even the programs we did have talked about up to this point are much more complicated than I have the time to talk about. But this is, those are the programs of the first New Deal. And obviously they are revolutionizing the relationship between the federal government and the rest of society.